Most people want to achieve at some point in their lifetime, but our next guest will point out getting there takes a little planning. She's been providing financial advice for over 35 years with a specific focus on physical and emotional issues women face when it comes to finances. Joining us to explain what those are and how we can overcome those, we welcome to the show founder and president of Women's Worth LLC, author and radio host, which I join as a co-host on the show. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we are, we've got you here with us today and I'm so Yay. excited we finally got you on the show. We've got Jeanette Vigalia and I am so excited to talk about the differences uh, and disparities between men and women because it is really important important. Shoes. How? Yes. How? How? Oh, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sorry. Sorry. How much time do we have? Oh, gosh. Uh, Six minutes. Go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, specifically, there actually there's no area where gender differences are more prevalent than in the area of money and finances. So women really need to wake up. This is a wake-up call to say, if we want to control our financial health and well-being, we have to control our wealth. Mm. And you have to control your wealth by proper planning. Is that, okay. is that the biggest reason why there's such a disparity between men and women in the finances? Well, when is you look planning? at all the compelling statistics, uh, typically women earn uh, less, about 76 cents to every dollar. Or I think the numbers have gone up to Not 77 cents yeah. to every Not dollar. Much. Even less a man if you're has a woman earned. Of color. And yeah. then we tend to work in professions that don't have pension plans, that have lower incomes. You find more women in education. You find them more in nursing. And those tend to be lower paying positions. So obviously, and then coupled with the fact that we live so long. The good news is we live long. The bad news is we live long and we have to plan for that long life. Hmm. So let me ask you this. I kind of already know the answer, but I'm going to just ask because the viewers want to know. What would okay. you say are some of the biggest financial challenges or mistakes that women make? Okay. Shoes. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> True. We talked about that earlier. How many pairs of ten? Uh, how many pairs of black shoes do we need? Oh, there's oh, different shades. Of black. There's different straps and the different shades I know. of black. The different high heels. Well, yes. Exactly. yes. Yes. All right. Think about if you lower the, your dependency on buying that tenth pair of black pants or the fifteenth pair of black shoes, and you save that money and you let it compound over twenty, twenty-five years, where will you be later on in life? So one of the big mistakes is we, one, don't pay ourselves first. I do. Oh, sorry. I do. <laughs> we don't pay, our, which means how much do you save? Of that, of that weekly, monthly mm -hmm. check you bring mm -hmm. in, how much do you save well, and you come set out it aside? Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing, uh, you're, you're rare. Well, see, this is something I was actually exactly thinking about on the drive over here. Not even just because it, well, uh -huh. you, we had you on, because I was thinking I need to save up for certain things. How much, on average, should you be taking out of your paycheck to save? Well, I personally think you should pay take out at least 20% of what you're making. Okay, good, because I was thinking yourself. 30 in my head on the way over here. Wow. <laughs> no, um, basically, most, uh, most uh, people don't save in their employer-sponsored retirement accounts, even to get a match. If you get a match, at least save enough to get that match. Companies are giving you free money by matching what you contribute on a pre-tax basis. But then you don't want to save all your money in one basket at pre-tax. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you have funds available. You need to have emergency rainy day funds. So do you have six months of savings just sitting there ready to be used just in case? But what about the credit card for that, though? But, but then you just rack up more debt, right? Like, isn't that I'm speaking the... for the people, honey. Right, the but people, that's the what I'm saying. Want, yeah, if you're not saving for that rainy day when you think, oh, you know what, I have a credit card. When that rainy day comes, I'll just swipe the card. All right. And you're getting more in debt, obviously. You are getting more in debt. I do not embrace. Go ahead and swipe it. Mm -hmm. Then you pay that credit card the next month before it accrues interest. Most of your credit cards are 17 to 24 percent interest. Oh, that's You'll that's never robbery. get ahead of the yeah. game, so you have to pay your. So we, as women, because we're living long, and longevity is redefining retirement planning for us as we get older. So whether you're 40, 50, 60, mm -hmm. 70, or 80, it's never too late. It's never too early to start planning for your future. This longevity is something that you've actually kind of researched because you've written three books, two of which are planning a purpose full life and then uh, wise up women a guide to total fiscal and physical well-being but in planning a purposeful life that one's specific the way that you wrote it I think is really interesting because you went and found women 
who were a little older mm -hmm. and asked how they did this money. So how did you how did you put the what was the idea for the book? Well, I started seeing a lot of uh, my clients, and when I'd say we have to make sure you have enough money to take you through a hundred, mm. they oh, would wow. say, "Oh no, my mother died at seventy-two, my father died at eighty. I'm mm. probably going to die at eighty-five. And I say, "No, well, well, let's make sure you have enough money to get you to and through a hundred. So I wanted to go learn from the greatest generation, and I spent two years interviewing men and women. Mm -hmm across the nation, oh, wow. east coast to west coast, because I wanted to learn what would they do differently? What advice would they give the younger generations with regard to still buying cars when you're 90, 95, oh, wow. still living in your homes and maintaining them at 90, 95? I just want to know what their longevity secrets were, mm -hmm. and that's what they shared with me, and that's what I put in the book that was just released in March. What was the most surprising thing you learned from someone during those interviews? The most surprising thing was their commitment to their families and to socialization. They stay connected with their loved ones. That is the most precious thing because this is a generation that you have to understand, I, I interviewed people over 90 mm -hmm. up to 102. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they're, they're, some of their kids have passed on, yeah. their, their friends have passed away, their family members have passed away, so guess what? socialization is important and their network of friends become their family and it's a beautiful thing to see because they serve one another they mm. serve their country they serve their churches and they serve their relationships wow. That's so well, I know sweet. we have to wrap but quickly what's the perfect age for women to start planning for retirement there's never a perfect age it's never too early and it's never too late but if you haven't started planning and you're in your mid 40s it's time to kick it up a couple notches and start planning. Now. Okay. Yesterday. Fine. Yes, Fine. Jeez. All right. Fine. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And if you'd like to find more information about Jeanette, including where to purchase her books, visit the website womens-worth.com or tune in to our Women's Worth radio program on Sundays at 1 p.m. on WOKV Radio 104.5 FM. All right. Well, coming up next, we are learning the tips for keeping children safe from cyber threats. We'll be right back. Is your body storing fat more easily?